What's up guys, Brian here from Blasted 5 and today I'm going to be looking at some of the newly released Oscar nominations and giving my own personal predictions on who's going to win what and which movie is going to win what come March 2023. Now, just a disclaimer, I've seen about 80% of these movies, so I've seen most of them and giving my own logic on why I think the person or the movie will win said award. So, without further ado, let's get right into this. So, I'm starting off with a big banger, one of the biggest awards, actor in a leading role. This might be probably one of the toughest decisions um, that I've seen in recent time because there were so many excellent performances. Just going down the list here, Austin Butler and Elvis, Colin Farrell in The Banshees of Inner Sharon, Brendan Fraser in The Whale, Paul Mescal in After Sun and Bill Nye in Living. Now, just that list right there, there's so many excellent performances. I could give it to any one of these individuals, to be honest. You know, going down the list, Austin Butler and Elvis, excellent transformative performance. Just just brilliant, honestly. It, it really was one of the standouts of the year. Even Elvis came out earlier this year, but it's still so memorable and fresh in people's minds because the performance was so incredible. He incarnated Elvis in a way we haven't seen in in years and decades. Colin Farrell uh, did such an amazing performance in The Banshees. He, he knocked it out of the park in my opinion. One of the best performances of this year. He's very underrated. I know he's still big, but his performance was just, uh, it was exquisite. It was, it was emotional. It was humorous. It was down to earth. You feel for the character. He just encompasses exactly what the character was meant to be and it's so subtle in the performance it's, it's just brilliant one of my favorite performances of the year brendan fraser i mean i'm sure you've heard the buzz his performance is absolutely immaculate in the whale you know all the prosthetics he he encompasses charlie you feel so bad for him but he just all the emotion the raw emotion he encompassed the character so well that you can't help but just be captivated by his performance throughout the whole movie. Just the emotional roller coaster. Paul Mescal in After Sun, solid as the father. Um, you know, wasn't a huge fan of the movie, if I'm being completely honest. But it was very, it's a very vulnerable movie, very open. And the characters feel so real, I will say that. And I thought Paul Mescal did a really good job as the father in that one. And uh, I did not see Living, but I did hear that Bill Nye... Now he did a very good job in the movie, and I, it's definitely on my watch list. But who do I think is going to win? Personally, it's a total toss-up. It's a coin flip between Fr Brendan Fraser in The Whale and Austin Butler's Elvis. It's total toss-up. Could be either one of them, to be honest. I could see either of them going up there. It is going to be one of those two. But I do think that it might be Austin Butler as Elvis. I think that it was a groundbreaking, transformative performance, like I said. It really is a, a once-in-a-lifetime sort of role for him, as, as well as Brendan Fraser, too. It's, I, as the more I think about it, it's just such a toss-up, honestly. It could be either of them. But I'm going to go with a gamble here. I'm going to say Austin Butler. Next, we have actor in a supporting role. We have Brendan Gleeson in The Banshees of Inner Sharon, Brian Tyree Henry in Causeway, Judd Hirsch in The Fablements, Barry Keoghan in The Banshees, and K. Hugh Kwan in Everything, Everywhere, All at Once. Another really good category, and some of these characters, some of these actors actually stole the show. Um, like Colin Farrell, his opposite in the movie, Brendan Gleeson, does an excellent job. They have such good chemistry. He might not be the main character, but he may, may as well be one of the main characters of the movie. He, he does the role with such poise in the movie. And as a man who's just sort of outgrown um, Colin Farrell's character, you really do feel every sense of emotion from the anger to just trying to find a more peaceful life. So, excellent performance. I did not see Causeway, but I do think Brian Tyree Henry is a very good up-and-coming actor. I am looking forward to seeing him in other things. I know he's been around in TV shows and he was in Bullet Train and, and other movies. But, you know, seeing him in a more vulnerable and serious role, I, I have no question that he probably did a really good job. Uh, Judd Hirsch in The Fablements plays a very small part in the movie, 
but as the crazy uncle, he has one of the most profound messages in the movie. You can't help but be sort of entertained and captivated by his performance as the crazy uncle to uh, the main character of the movie. So, you know, with that in mind, a really good performance. Uh, Barry Keoghan did a great job as well, you know, as a sort of misfit, sort of drunken younger guy in the movie. Very good, but honestly, you know, it... it other people in the in the category stand out more, but a solid performance. Plays his, the role very well. And finally, K. Hugh Kwan in Everything Ever All at Once totally steals the show. He's a counterpart to Michelle Yeoh in the movie, and he just does everything from the emotional aspect to the action sequences to the funny sequences. He's got it all. Very super well-rounded performance, and you can't really help to be captivated by what he does throughout the movie. So because of that, I do think that K. Hugh Kwan will be winning this award. And, you know, it's very good because I, I think he seems like a very humble guy. I think that he's very passionate about the craft. And it's good to see him sort of come back after all this time. He's been in, in you know, he was in Deanna Jones a long time ago. But it's good to see him come back in, in a new, a fresh role like this. So I do think it will be going to him. Next up, we have actress in a leading role. We have Kate Blanchett in Tar, Anna de Armas in Blonde, Andrea Riseborough in Two's Leslie, Michelle Williams in The Fablemans, and Michelle Yeoh in Everything Everywhere all at once. So, starting off at the top, Kate Blanchett did a great job in Tar. I, I think she really was excellent. Was not a fan of the movie at all. I, I really did think it was a bit self-indulgent. I thought it was way too long and, you know, forgettable. But that's a that's a video for another time. But with all that being said, though, even though I didn't like the movie, I thought her performance was very good in the movie. I think she's really underrated as it is. She's such a solid actor. Very poised. And the way she just totally commands the screen. You can't help but look away when she's on there doing her thing. Excellent role. In, in Tar. Ana Darmus, I did not see Blonde, but from what I saw, I, I think she did a very good job as Marilyn Monroe. I was hearing great things about it. Probably one of the only redeeming things I heard in the press as far as what people thought of the movie. But, uh, you know, I think she deserves merit as well for being another great, uh, encompassing another iconic person in history through another biopic this year. Did not see too Leslie, so I can't really comment on Andrea Riseborough's performance. Michelle Williams in The Fableman. I thought she was excellent in The Fablemans, honestly. Personally, I would like her to win. I think she deserves to win, but I don't, I don't think that she's going to win the award. But I, I think she deserves it, personally. Her role in the movie is so much more complex than it appears. It's such a subtle performance that she delivers in the movie with such grace. Uh, she has a sorting vibe about her. Just just the vibe that she gives up through the movie is, is just, there's something wrong with her in the movie and you can really tell, but the way she plays it off and, and she's it's conflicted. It's a conflicted character. There's so many different emotions and thoughts sort of creeping in her head. And even as a supporting, you know, role in that, right? It, it it just, it's a testament to her acting that you're totally, you feel for the character through and through. So I, I think Michelle Williams totally nailed it, blew it out of the park. And then the second Michelle on this list, Michelle Yeoh in Everything Everywhere. I thought she also did an amazing job in the movie, just like the previous nominee. I think she did a whole marathon relay race of acting to be honest it was there it was emotional roles there was funny there was emotional moments funny moments serious moments action sequences which she played a part in it was just it because of the nature of the movie and how much happens in it and how much it it asks for a character to go through this crazy multiverse of just changing characters and wearing a bunch of hats literally wearing a bunch of different hats so because of that, I think Michelle Yeoh will be winning this award. But I really would love them if Michelle Williams won it. But Michelle Yeoh definitely deserves it as well. So I think she will be taking this one. Next up, we have actress in a supporting role. Angela Bassett in Black Panther Wakanda Forever. Hong Chow in The Whale. Harry Carrie Condon in The Banshees. Jamie Lee Curtis and Stephanie Sue, both in Everything Everywhere. 
going down the list, I did not see Black Panther, Wakanda Forever, but I heard that Angela Bassett did a very good job in the movie. Hong Chao in The Whale, she did an excellent job, honestly. I thought she totally stole the show. Somehow, with being in the same room and same sort of scene as Charlie, as Brendan Fraser in the movie, somehow she still held it down so well, you believe every emotion that she has. You don't doubt it for a second that she is friends, good friends, longtime friend with Charlie throughout the movie. And it you see the pain in her eyes. You see the way she acts. It's so realistic, honestly. She delivers such a vulnerable performance in the movie. It, it really is something amazing. So I, 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 she deserves to win this for sure. Do I think she's going to win it? I do not. But she definitely deserves it. Carrie Condon and the Banshees of Inner Sharon, she nailed it as well. If you want a testament to how to write uh, a strong female character, you know, everybody's talking about this, the, you know, writing strong female characters. This is how you do it. This is, uh, take notes. Same with, with uh, Hong Chao's character in The Whale. Take notes. Because that, this is how you do it. They're, they're, it's emotional. It's, it's strong. She's probably one of the strongest characters in this movie. Fancy Vinner Sharon. As far as sort of people who have their, you know, have everything together or, or have ambitions or have sort of a direction in their life. She is sort of almost a caretaker to Colin Farrell's character. And she, she kind of, the way she, she evolves throughout the movie, she is like, uh, as far as society, societally, she, she's above Colin Farrell in a way. But she totally nails it as the loving sister of Colin Farrell. Great performance. Jamie Lee Curtis and Everything Everywhere. Uh, I thought that she, she's always been a great actress, and she does an excellent job in this movie as well. Always, I feel like she always holds it down, even when she's in trash movies like Halloween Ends or whatever. Still holds it down, all things considered. So you know, given a good script like this one, I you know she totally nailed it as this sort of funny, sort of like um, douchey character as well at times, but really good performance and stephanie Shu, she also uh, does such an, a brilliant job as well as playing sort of a pseudo villain daughter type role in the movie I, I think she also does a great job i'm not too familiar with their works but she totally nailed it as sort of this duality of, of people as well so this is a really tough category to be honest any of these people could win they really do all deserve it but even though I haven't seen the movie, my gut feeling is that Angela Bassett will be winning for Wakanda Forever. But personally, I would love to see Ong Chao win for The Whale. Next up, we have Directing, another really strong, a lot of strong contenders on this one. The Banshee of Inner Sharon, Martin McDonough, Everything Everywhere All at Once, The Daniels, The Fablemans by Steven Spielberg, Tar by Todd Field, and Triangle of Sadness by Ruben Ostland. Now, a lot of great showing. All of these movies are really good, to be honest. I liked all of them. My, okay, minus Tar, as I said. I wasn't a fan of that movie. But uh, b besides that one, the other ones are all really great. So, you know, the Banshee of Inner Sharon, Martin McDonough is, is reuniting with Brendan Gleeson and Colin Farrell. This is not the first time they've all three of them have worked together. So, you know, they already have that camaraderie. And you can tell on the screen how well the three of them work together you could tell it, it's it's electric when all three of them are are together and, and having this original script written by him it's just it's one of the tightest movies of 2022 everything ever all at once by by the daniels I, I think that both of them just that duo it did something really spectacular this last year by creating one of the most ambitious movies i've seen in recent time and just directing that multi-leveled multiverse multiple chapter just crazy story like they were able to do and still keep the same level of emotion and cool action sequences and funny like it's a movie that has everything to be able to direct that is just it's it's a testament to their craft um then we have the fablemans by steven spielberg one of the most renowned directors of all time, and this movie is probably Steven Spielberg at, at his best. It's been a while since I've seen, you know, I, I will say West Side Story was really good, but seeing him in his element in this movie is something quite special. He's He hits his peak in this movie. 
y you know, I, I started to think that he was kind of fizzling out there, but this movie, you take it all back, it has that classic Spielberg feel to it. The aesthetic of it, the way it's directed, everything about it. It just screams a movie that would have been a huge hit, a classic. If this movie came out 30 years ago, 40 years ago, it would it would remain a classic to this day. People would still be talking about it. So it just really, and I think it's closest to his story. So I think he deserves massive props. For this is at the top of his game showing why he is one of the goats when it comes to movies in general. Tar by Todd Field. Nothing against the director. Uh, ultimately, it's not directed terribly. I mean, it's really not. To, to get the performances that they do, everybody feels very realistic in the movie. You know, ever, uh, Kate Blanchett's performance is amazing. The cinematography is great. It's a tight movie, technically. So I have to give him props for that. But it was just the editing and the writing and some of the choices they decided to go with that totally failed the movie miserably. But... You know, I gotta give him props. And then finally, surprising movie of last year, Triangle of Sadness by Ruben Oslin. I thought it was a very good movie. The way it was able to weave a social commentary without being on the nose about it. Yes, there's some things that are obvious in the movie. It's the subtlety that he's able to have in the movie and have just a combination of funny moments, but dark moments. It's a very dark comedy, but it's definitely worth checking out if you haven't seen it. It's a little, it's pretty long, but I was immersed. I was captivated throughout. Thought the performances are really good and it's really unique. So I think he deserves credit for that as well. This one is a toss up between the Daniels, Daniel Kwan and Daniel Scheinart and Steven Spielberg. I think both of their movies, it's going to be a toss up between the three of them. But personally, I think the edge is going to go to the Fableman, Steven Spielberg, with his, with his uh, history of movie making just coming to light in this movie the way he, the what, what he was able to accomplish honestly it, it's so it's so amazing i really did love the fableman so i'm going to be giving it to him next up is visual effects there were some amazing movies the amazing visual effects throughout we had all quiet on the western front avatar the way of the water the batman Black Panther, Wakanda Forever, and Top Gun Maverick. So going down the list, All Quiet on the Western Front. Sadly, I was not able to catch this one, but it looked absolutely stunning. And the effects that they had throughout the movies, throughout the trailer, it looked brilliant. Avatar The Way of the Water goes without saying. It's, it's a technical marvel. It's stunning to look at. It has always been, just like the first one, it totally redefines what it means as far as visual effects are concerned. The Batman, there was a lot of practical effects in the Batman. I'm trying to remember some of the visual effects that they actually had in the movie, unless that counts towards visual effects. But when I think of visual effects, my mind goes mainly to CGI, computer-generated things and stuff like that, the look of the movie as well. So, you know, correct me if I'm wrong on that. I, I don't believe that it's straight practical effects included in there. But if we're counting that, there was some really good effects in the Batman. Black Panther Wakanda Forever, like all Marvel movies, the graphics, if nothing else, if you're let down by the movie, you can sure, you know, bet your ass that the graphics are going to be great in the movie. You know, Wakanda Forever has excellent graphics, of course, and Top Gun Maverick, another movie had very minimal visual effects, mainly, mostly just practical effects. I think oh, they did all the plane sequences in real life, in real time, so super impressed by them as well but for me i you know i think this is a no-brainer uh, these all have excellent visual effects but avatar the way of the water is just it, it's a marvel to look at the animators are insane props to them I, I can't imagine how long it took them to make that so excellent avatar the way of the water next we have writing original screenplay we're gonna do the originals here the banshees and are sharing written by martin mcdowell Everything Ever All at Once, written by Daniel Kwan and Daniel Scheinert. Steven Spielberg and Tony Kushner for The Fablemans. Tar, written by Todd Field. And Triangle Sadness, written by Ruben Ostland. As we can see, a lot of writer-director combos in this movie. In fact, all of these are written by the directors to a certain degree. So, The Banshees of Inner Sharon, one of the tightest, brilliantly written movies of this year by Martin McDowell. Just excellent excellent writing to be honest 
Yeah, the char the, it's encompassed. It sort of gives the characters such life, and it, the movie says so much. Yet the plot's so, so simple, but it says so much. It's just brilliant the way he was able to do that. The Daniels did an amazing job in everything, everywhere, all at once. Just be it, having written all of that craziness on on a script, just to think of all that. And to have it sort of come back full circle and be sort of this emotional ride that tells you a really profound message. It's just, it's crazy how they were able to pull that off as well. It's testament to their writing and their vision. And then next is The Fableman, Steven Spielberg and Tony Kushner. Again, another really powerfully, really well written movie with a lot of subtleties. It takes turns that I had no idea. Just looking at the trailer, you have no idea what the movie's really gonna be about and just the way they were able to weave in these subplots that have such powerful end endings and have such unpredictable results. I, I th that's one of the things that I liked about it, how different it was, that normally you can predict everything that's gonna happen, but there's twists and turns in this movie that you don't, you don't think, you don't see coming. Um, especially in the middle part of the movie, there's, there's some things that happen that you really didn't see coming unless you really know Sam Spielberg's life and and you could see that is a testament to his own how close this is how close this work is to him personally then we have Tar had a lot of problems with how it was written to be honest the, the dialogue is well written but it's just the pacing and and what the, the message is totally lost in the editing room I, I really I really uh, was wasn't a huge fan and then like I was saying triangle of sadness very smartly written, very clever, the way they go about actually doing the social commentary. And it's it's very poetic in the way it's written. And everybody feels very real in the movie as well. But real as in the way they speak or how the crew speaks and everything. But these people are, are cartoonish as well. The main characters, they're mockeries of, of actual people. But the way it is written, it's super clever as a dark comedy. It's got everything from funny moments to dark moments. So... You know, again, another great, another great original screenplay. But for me personally, I think that the Banshees of Inner Sharon is the best written movie out of this list, and I do think that they will win. If not them, then I think the Daniels will win. But I do believe that Martin McDowell will be winning for <clears throat> the Banshees of Inner Sharon. Such a tight movie, definitely worth checking out if you haven't already. And finally, the big award for all the marbles best picture we have 10 movies to go through here i'm going to go through them real quick all quiet on the western front avatar the way of the water the banshees of inner sharon elvis everything everywhere all at once the fablemans tar top gun maverick triangle of sadness and finally women talking now all these movies are are so good from what i saw the only two i was not able to catch were all quiet on the western front and women talking those were the only two i wasn't able to see so i can't really tell you what i think about them or if they have a chance of winning to be honest from looking at this list i i don't think either of them would be able to either of them would be able to sort of compete with some of the others on the list but again i'd have to see it i, I can't really make that judgment right now but going to avatar the way of the water it was a very solid movie very great blockbuster but not personally not deserving of best picture i don't think it's gonna win uh, definitely not oscar -y enough you know there's there's a certain there's usually a certain artsy vibe there's usually a certain artsy theme that the movie has that usually wins and avatar is just a straight blockbuster so i can't really see that winning anything the banshees of inner sharon one of the best movies of the year but personally i don't think it's gonna win elvis uh, Baz Luhrmann, it's it's a stunning, really entertaining ride of a movie, but I don't think it holds up to be the best of the year. Everything, everywhere, all at once. Definitely one of contenders for the best movie of the year, for just the way that it's able to be so ambitious yet so tight in its script and story. The Fablemans, like I said, I've been talking about how good it is. Tar, not, not a chance. Top Gun Maverick, excellent movie, another excellent blockbuster, one of the best sequels ever made, probably for a movie, as far as the requels or whatever, whatever you want to call them, reboots, one of the best ever made, hands down, just a total um, ride, thrill ride from beginning to end, but I, again, not Oscar-y enough to win, I don't think. Triangle Sadness, 
a great a, another gem that I think I came across last year. But personally, I don't think it's it's uh, was impactful enough to win Best Picture. And Women Talking, I can't speak on it because I haven't seen it. But I did hear that that was very good as well. But uh, looking at this list, which one do I think is going to win? Personally, I think Everything, Everywhere, All at Once will win Best Picture. If not that, The Fablemans. But one of those two. But I think it's going to go to Everything, Everywhere, All at Once for the reasons I mentioned beforehand. Well, that's my nominations. That Those are my predictions. Let me know below what you agree with, what you disagree with. Let me know. And, and you know, come back to this video and let's see how right I was come March. It's going to be a while, but hey, those are my, my predictions. They're out there. They're out online. So if I'm 100% correct, then I have full bragging rights for the end of time. Just kidding. But thank you very much for watching. Please make sure to subscribe for more movie content. Have a good one. Goodbye.